Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Turkish military officials say they've shot down a Russian military aircraft on the Syrian border after warning its pilots they were violating Turkish airspace. Russia denies the plane violated Turkish airspace. Syrian rebels say at least one of the pilots is dead after both ejected before the crash. The Belgian capital, Brussels, remains shut down as soldiers and tanks patrol the streets. Belgian authorities continue to search for Salah Abdeslam, a suspect in the Paris attacks that killed 130 people on November 13, While subways and schools are set to reopen Wednesday, Brussels is expected to remain on the highest level of alert through the week. Belgian Prime Minister Charles Michel said the threat continues, although he did not say exactly exactly what the threat was. Right. We were facing yesterday. The potential targets are the same as yesterday, too. I remind you, these are highly frequented places, such as shopping areas, shopping streets, shopping centers, and public transports. In neighboring France, police have continued a wide-ranging crackdown, carrying out more than 1,000 searches and detaining more than 100 people. The New York Times reports officers broke down the door of a restaurant selling halal burgers and Tex-Mex food in the Paris suburbs over the weekend, but found nothing. On Monday, police said they found a suicide belt in the Paris suburb of Montrouge, which may have been discarded by the fugitive suspect Salah Abdeslam. French President François Hollande meets with President Obama in Washington, D.C., today, where he's expected to push for an intensified campaign against the so-called Islamic State, which authorities say is behind the Paris attacks. France has tripled its capacity to conduct strikes against ISIS by deploying an aircraft carrier in the Mediterranean. Both France and Russia have heavily bombed the Syrian city of Raqqa, the de facto capital of ISIS, which is also home to many civilians, hundreds of thousands of them. Activists in Raqqa report the chemical weapon white phosphorus has been used. The United States, meanwhile, has struck an ISIS revenue source, hitting nearly 300 tanker trucks used to transport oil out of eastern Syria. Russian officials, meanwhile, said their forces killed 14 people accused of smuggling fighters out of the North Caucasus to join the Islamic State in Syria. In Minneapolis, Minnesota, five Black Lives Matter protesters have been shot and wounded. They say the shooters were white supremacists. At least one of them was wearing a mask. The protesters were gathered in an encampment outside a police precinct, where they've been protesting the police killing of unarmed African-American Jamar Clark. Activists say the white supremacists opened fire after a group of protesters attempted to herd them away from the encampment. Jironski Riley described the shooting to the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Then it was like they turned around and then they just like started shooting. And at first I wasn't sure, like I was like, are they shooting firecrackers? Because it was so loud and it was like all this like sulfur or whatever. And then it, then it was like, then it was like the person like right next to me on, on my left went down, the person on my right went down. And I was like, Sh it's like they're actually shooting at us. They're shooting bullets at us. Activists said police took a long time to respond to the shooting and then use mace on bystanders. We'll have more on the shooting and the police killing of Jamar Clark later in the broadcast with Minnesota Democratic Congressmember Keith Ellison. In Oregon, authorities say they're treating the assault of an African-American college student by white three white students as a possible hate crime. Lewis and Clark student Tange Mavuna said he was beaten by three white men who used racial slurs, threatened his life, and forced him to drink an unknown liquid. In Chicago, Illinois, a white police officer who shot an African-American teenager 16 times last year, killing him, will reportedly be charged with murder today. October 2014, Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke shot and killed 17-year-old Laquan McDonald. Police have claimed McDonald lunged at the officer with a small knife, but people who've seen police dash cam video say it contradicts the police account, instead showing the officer opening fire on McDonald while he was walking away and continuing to shoot him even after the teenager was lying on the pavement. 
Last week, a county judge ordered the city to release the footage of the shooting by Wednesday. We'll go to Chicago after headlines. The California city of Fullerton has agreed to pay $4.9 million to settle a civil case over the police beating death of a mentally ill homeless man in 2011. Officers Manuel Ramos and Jay Cicinelli were acquitted last year in the death of Kelly Thomas, whose injuries included a compressed trachea and broken facial bones. Over the course of nearly 10 minutes, Thomas was tackled, hit with a baton, pinned down, punched repeatedly in the ribs, kneed in the head, tasered four times, then struck in the face with the taser itself eight times. Footage shows him pleading for help. He died days later. Republican presidential contender Donald Trump has doubled down on his false claim Muslims in New Jersey celebrated the 9-11 attacks. He said thousands of thousands of them did. Trump claimed there were tailgate-style celebrations after 9-11. Republican rival Ben Carson has dialed back his initial support for Trump's comments, claiming he saw a video of people celebrating, but, quote, I don't know where they were, he said. Speaking at a rally Monday, Trump also doubled down on his support for using torture techniques against ISIS, saying he would, quote, approve more than waterboarding. Would I approve waterboarding? And I said, well, let me ask you a question. On the other side, they chop off our young people's heads and they put them on a stick. On the other side, they build these iron cages and they'll put 20 people in them and they drop them in the ocean for 15 minutes and pull them up 15 minutes later. Would I approve water porting? You bet your ass I'd approve it. You bet your ass. In a heartbeat. And Doctors Without Borders has identified 14 staff members killed in a U.S. airstrike on its hospital in Kunduz, Afghanistan, October 3rd. In a statement, Doctors Without Borders said the hospital was hit by precise and repeated airstrikes for more than an hour, quote, even as the attack continued, our colleagues fought for their lives and for the lives of their patients with extraordinary determination and courage. Doctors Without Borders said the Obama administration still has not released its review of the strike, which killed at least 30 people. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Cook.